Hey everybody, it's Pastor Brian here. We're just about ready to get started with our service. So glad that you could join us this morning. Hopefully if you're ever in the New Holland area, uh, you'll have a chance to come and visit us in person. There's nothing like worshiping God in the presence of an entire community of believers. It's just so encouraging and God's presence is, is awesome. I just want to leave you with a thought that will kind of center our hearts as we get ready to worship the Lord together this morning. He says in 105 for the Psalms, 105 for, he says, Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. So as we gather together, I just pray that our hearts will be able to begin to focus on his face and worship him. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Petra. It's so good to be together. Welcome to those of you in the room this morning, those of you listening online. We are excited to exalt the Lord together. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to sing the song, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. And it has this repetitive part that just is singing amen, amen. And I just want to remind us that as we sing that, that is just a declaration of agreement that we together are singing amen. You are worthy to be praised. And so let's just sing this together. Let's release our voices and praise the Lord in this place. Amen.
thankful that God, God is not a God based on our feelings, but He's constant. He's there even when we don't feel Him. He's constant through the ages and through generations, and He's faithful. So join me in praising Him, and let's proclaim His goodness. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. I sing because you are good and I attention of our praise thank you that your goodness follows us is with us we find refuge in you God that's part of your nature part of your character your goodness your faithfulness Lord we worship you this morning you are worthy of our praise Great is thy 
thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy
that you are here in this room with us. You are here beside us each day of our lives. Lord, we're so thankful. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you to be faithful today, to be faithful in the future because you were faithful in the past, Lord. And you never change. You never change. Thank you, Lord.
captives that you are freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers that I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. God, you are our solid rock, the rock of ages. Lord, we know that your love endures through the generations. Your love endures forever. We stand on your faithfulness. God, we know that you heal us, that you see us. Lord, we know that you move among us. Holy Spirit, come and fill us and speak to us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Good morning. Hey, before you uh, sit down, be sure to greet and say hi to those around you. I'm Sharon Zimmerman. I'm one of the pastors here at Petra, and I want to welcome all of you here. Those of you that are here on campus and those of you who are joining us online, I'm so glad that you are here. Those of you who are guests, I especially want to welcome you. Uh, we'd like to hear from you, so if you can take a moment, please uh, text Petra Guest to the numbers on the screen and follow the prompts and give us some of your information. And also guests, make sure that you got an uh, orange bag from one of the kiosks in the lobby. We have some special things in there for you. Oh, and as a way of giving a hint to some of you and a message to all of you, I want to remind you that the love of our Lord is everlasting. Happy Valentine's Day. You are loved. Blessings. Also, I am in a bit of a quandary this morning because, you know, speaking of red and Valentine's, red is actually my all-time favorite color. And I don't know which team to pick to root for in the Super Bowl today because none of them are going to be wearing red outfits. So I guess I'm going to join all the moms of all the players, and I'm going to pray for safety and protection over all the players. And I'm also going to declare that the Lord's going to show up and show himself powerful today at the Super Bowl. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. Okay, Brian Coles is, has an announcement for us. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. Uh, we have an exciting announcement this morning I uh, want to make you uh, aware of. Uh, for the last several months, uh, Nacho and Mary Lee Barrera have been serving as our interim youth leaders over our high school ministries, and they have accepted the invitation as we've been discerning with the elders and praying. Uh, they've accepted the invitation to become our student ministries pastor here at Petra Church, so we're very excited about that. Yeah. Uh, they have been doing just a phenomenal job, and we, we spoke with the students and with the teams, and this, everyone is really exciting, including all of the leadership. And so if you could just be praying for them, we are going to license them here in the next few weeks, so you can uh, keep your eye out for that. Uh, Nacho is also going to con 
continue to serve uh, just a couple of hours a week as a non-resident missionary to Thailand. So that work is going to be continuing. I know many of you support them and pray for them in that. And so that's going to keep going on uh, as they serve uh, in the student ministries as well. Can we just say thank you one more time to the Lord for that? That's such a huge answer to prayer. Yes, God is faithful, and it's a joy to serve with them. It's also exciting to um, learn what God is doing around the world. So uh, enjoy this Missions Minute about our very own Randy and Bonnie Martin. Good morning, Petra family. We are Randy and Bonnie Martin, missionaries from Petra serving in Kenya, Africa. Our ministry is called Preparing the Way Ministries, preparing the church for Christ's return. We are so excited to share with you today some of the amazing things God did in 2021. But first, we'd like to thank you for standing with us through your prayers and financial support that keeps us doing the work that God has called us to do. Last year in Kenya, we saw God do amazing things. We lost count, but we believe over 700 salvations happened, and we saw God do many miracles. 2021, God laid on our hearts that it would be a year of foundation. We saw God put many things in place that had to be the hand of God and prayer because there's no other way than God. We got our Kenyan residents and our ministry license in Kenya. We also got our 501c3 nonprofit status here in America. And we praise the Lord for that. We are pursuing 50 acres of land in Kenya where one part of our ministry called Community Empowerment will be able to help and train farmers, construction workers, and other life skills that will help the family put food on the table and pay for school fees. We are AABS National Directors in Kenya working with J.C. Ebersol, who is a missionary from Petra. We are also working with Les Yoder from Ag Connect, also a missionary here at Petra. We want to give a special thanks to the Children's Ministry for raising funds last year that helped us reach over 500 children. We are excited how God brings the body together to accomplish His purposes. And this is important because of you here at Petra standing with us. We are also excited to share with you that our annual banquet is coming up at Shady Maple Smorgasbord on March 5th. Please put it in your calendar. Don't miss this event. Come out and invite your friends to this fun and amazing night. Go to our website to sign up today to save your spot at the table. We will be sharing many stories, pictures, videos of what God did in 2021 and what God is doing in 2022 as we pursue Him, follow His lead to see the church ready for Christ's return. Thank you, Petra family. We are honored and blessed to be missionaries from Petra. Look to see you at the banquet and come and visit us in Kenya anytime. We are there waiting for you. Come out in the foyer today and we'll have a table set up where you can learn more about our ministry, sign up for the banquet, and just see more of what is happening. God bless you, and see you soon. I'm so grateful that Petra highly values missions, and we do need to remember to uh, pray for our missionaries. If you would like to give to Randy and Bonnie Martin when... Uh, you use like text to give or online options. You can just specifically choose their names and give to them. I do really, really appreciate the generosity of all of you here at Petra. And um, it's just awesome to see how the giving from you uh, we can use in the community and do what God has called Petra to do. We have options for you to give. You can uh, give to the text uh, to give option by texting Petra Give to the number on the screen. Um, you can also give online through the app, and there are boxes uh, to receive your offering along the back wall. When we pray over the offering, I'm also going to pray for Anna Horst and her family. Anna's mother passed away this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are continually reminded of your provisions for us and your love for us. We ask for your blessings on our gifts. Lord, I ask that you would multiply them and use them 
for those who are in need and also to further your kingdom. Lord, I want to hold Anna Horst and her family to you. Lord, I ask that you would comfort them and give them your peace. Lord, I know that you have a really awesome, powerful message for us this morning. And God, I just ask that you would help us to keep our hearts humble and teachable so that we can hear what you have for us and we can uh, work toward greater freedom in you. God, I also ask that uh, with your anointing on him and uh, a sensitivity to your leading, that you would bless Pastor Brian as he brings your message to us today. Lord, thank you for your protection for us as we gather. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we show the uh, video announcements this morning, I would like to invite you to our Belong journey. Belong is a great way if you're looking um, to get connected, you've been here a long time or you're just here uh, as, a, as a guest, you're welcome to join the Belong journey. You can uh, discover ways to connect, you can learn of ways to serve, and today's teaching is on grow, and there is where you can discover pathways to growing in your faith at Petra. So as we watch the video announcements, you are released to join Belong, the, the coaches here in down the center aisle and ready for you. Thank you for giving your attention to the screens for the announcements. Hi, we are so glad you are worshiping with us today. Here's the latest Petra news. A women's night out is planned for Friday, February 25th. New this year are escape rooms, which will allow you and a small group of other women to gather in a room, find clues, and solve a series of puzzles before time is up. We'll also enjoy tacos, Fox Creamery ice cream, volleyball, and table games. You need to sign up for an escape room online. Our Kingdom Kids Family Fun Night is Sunday, February 20th from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Castle Roller Skating Rink. Register online by this Wednesday. Hi, it's Caleb Gudgeon. I wanted to personally invite you to join our worship choir for Easter Sunday this year on April 17th. Or if you are a symphonic instrumentalist, to join our string ensemble on Good Friday, April 15th. Grab your phone and scan this QR code for more information. For the choir, we need all voice parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. All ages are welcome to join. For instrumental ensemble players, I encourage you to join us if you play violin, viola, cello, or the double bass. We'd love to have you join our ensemble for Good Friday. For all you band players out there, percussionists, brass, woodwinds, please let me know if you'd like to be involved in future events. I'd love to get you connected. Follow this QR code to let us know if you want to get involved. If you have any other questions, please email me at calebg at petra.church or go to one of the hubs. I look forward to hearing from you. All the latest Petra news is online on our app or get it sent to your email. Let's continue our freedom message series. Hey Amen. Well, good morning. Caleb asked me just to add to that kazoo and jaw harp. Those tryouts will be in three weeks, so please get ready to go. Sorry, I couldn't help myself on that one. Hey, we're really excited to be here uh, this morning. We are in week. So what I did was I paused just, just so that you know. I paused that for a moment. He threw up the slide, and then they're going to cut that really corny joke in the morning. They'll get rid of that for the replay. So I just gave him an opportunity to do that. All right. We're going we're gonna to get into week three this morning uh, for uh, our series, Freedom. Uh, how many of you have been enjoying Freedom so far? Has it been a blessing? I mean, I know this has just been a powerful time in our church community, and we're so grateful for that. Thank you for your participation. Uh, we're going to continue. We're on week three, and I do want to just say one more time that our Sunday morning services will be moving at a different pace than uh, your weekly gathering. So uh, Pastor Brian Fuelling and I are trying to pull out some of the, the neat things that we want to keep on your radar uh, for the future, and so we're just going to hit some of those on Sunday mornings as you uh, progress through with your small groups. Uh, the first week I had a fork as an illustration. The second week Brian probably had the coolest illustration ever with the bookshelf or whatever. I, yeah, it was awesome. Can you give it up for that, that sermon? What a great message. Yes. I had live elephants, but because of the snow, which I didn't know about, we had to cancel. So did anyone else not know about the snow? Did that just surprise you? Tracy, like, she's like, look outside, it's snowing. I'm like, what in the world? It was like 70 degrees yesterday. Okay. 
I did not warn the first service. I'm going to warn you ahead of time. I think I scared them. Uh, there's different modes that you get into in preaching depending on how much content you have to cover, okay? Uh, sometimes it's like the relaxed, casual conversation mode. Other times I'll use dramatic pause <laughs> for effect. All right, listen, so this morning is fire hydrant mode, okay? I got a lot of content that I want to get through, and it's just good stuff, all right? I feel like the Lord is, has really does have a message for us this morning, uh, so I'm going to, uh, with the Lord's help, get us to where uh, we're going, and I think it's going to be a blessing uh, for you. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we love about America, speaking of snow and roads and things like that, is we love the fact that there's at least, uh, at least two ways to get to wherever you're going. I mean, some of you, some of you may, these are arguments in your home, right? There's the, there's the right way, there's the main way, there's the, the normal way, then there's the back way, and then there's the side way, and some of you would say your spouse chooses the wrong way, right? There's all these different ways. We love the fact that there's many different ways to go, but every once in a while, there's still places in America where there's really only one way to get to somewhere. There's just this one town that you have to go through, and they know it, so they hike up all their prices because they know there's like after them there's nothing, so you have to stop there. And but we don't like that in America, especially as Americans. We like to have options. We like to have choices. We like to decide uh, which way we want uh, to go. That's why there's so many buffets because we love choices, right? But every once in a while. In real life, and in, in our roads, we, we, we have to go a certain direction, and this is really true for our faith, and it's our topic uh, this morning. Uh, this is a little bit of humor involved in our first point, but it's just very, very true, is that everyone's journey to emotional, relational, and spiritual freedom passes through a small town called Surrender. Every, every single person's journey, it doesn't matter who you are, at some point, you're going to have to surrender some things. You're going to have to let some things go. You're going to have to offer some things back to the Lord, and you're going to have to say, hey, you do with this whatever you want. You can't make it to Jesus. You can't make it to righteousness, and you certainly cannot make it to heaven without uh, surrender. The cool thing about surrender is that this isn't like a foreign concept. Like, this actually makes a lot of sense, right? We were talking about chiropractors last week. And if you fight with your chiropractor, it's just not going to help you, all right? You need to surrender. You need to allow them to do what they want to do. I t talk a little bit about coaching basketball and for my son's team. And we have a couple of players that actually attend church here that are on his team. And, and I, I remember this one player, uh, he would catch the ball, but he kept finding himself directly underneath the hoop, right? So he's like right underneath there. And he would try to shoot and it would bounce off the bottom of the hoop and he could never get a good shot because he was too close to the, the basket. And so I'm not the greatest basketball coach in the world. The, you know, eight-year-olds is probably like my lane. That's my basketball knowledge. But I said to him after a game, I said, hey, come here, come here. I want to show you something. I said, whenever you're right underneath the basket like that, I want you to just do, like, just do a little side dribble. Like one step. Just take one step. Just dribble to the side, and you'll be able to shoot because you'll kind of come out from underneath the basket. So the, I, I said that to him uh, at the end of a game, so a whole week goes by. I don't even think I talked to him about it. And we're at the next weekend and the next game, and he catches this pass, and he's directly underneath the hoop. And he's like trying to figure out what to do, and he stops. He looks right at me. And he's like, and I'm like, do it, you know? I'm like, and he's like, and he shoots and he scores. And we were like, yeah, you know, like, and we just all celebrating. Why? Because he was willing to be coached, right? Willing to take advice. He was willing to surrender to a new way of doing something uh, so that he could be successful. And isn't that really what surrender is? Surrender isn't uh, just this negative word where you're giving up or I have to let go of the thing that I love the most. Surrender is, is listening to the wisdom of God and the truth of God and the direction of God and saying, Yes, I remember being in uh, seminary, and they, they, I guess this was really popular at the time, but they would say, hey, I want you to start your semester, and I want you to get a piece of paper, and you would write at the top, dear God, and then you would write yes at the bottom. So at the top, dear God, and at the bottom you'd write Yes, and, and our professors would say, let God fill in the rest of the letter, right? Let him, let him write on there whatever you want, but give him your yes, right? And isn't that what God is after? He wants our, our yes. Like, I will suffer for you, Lord, in the Bahamas. I will, I promise, okay? Just hear him, I send me. I will do that. Whatever you want, God, however you want to use my life, I want to say yes, because I know when I do that, I am walking in his blessing, and I'm walking in his anointing, and I'm walking in his power. There's so many good things to saying yes to the Lord. 
I'd like to start our time talking about uh, kind of this theology of surrender. There's, there's at least four verses that I think paint a picture for us uh, of what it means to surrender to the Lord. Matthew 16, verse 24 says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me uh, will find it. I I want you to leave that up there for just a moment, if you will, and we can look at it. It says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. We have all of these cravings in our lives. We're hungry for all of these different things. And Jesus says, yes, you're going to have a lot of things that you are hungry for or you have cravings for, and I want you to deny those things. If you're going to be my disciple, you need to deny yourself. Also, you need to take up your cross. There's going to be some things that are uncomfortable that you need to endure to be a follower of mine. It's not all roses, right? Life has its ups and downs. Not everything that you're going to do in this faith journey is going to be your favorite part, right? And then he kind of says this oxymoron here. He says, Whatever, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will, will find it. And don't we know that this is true? It's like the more you try to control, the more you try to hold on, the more you try to do it your way and no one else's way, it's like things just, it's like sand. It just kind of crumbles through your fingers. He's saying if you, if you would surrender to me, surrendering is actually the steps towards finding real life. And if, you would, if you're willing to give up, if you're willing to surrender, I'll lead you toward real life. And we know this. This is not a foreign concept. If you are a business owner, we have any business owners in the crowd, right? Or you, you know about a business owner, or you can spell business. Okay, anyone know about businesses, right? You, you, you know there are things you have to do as a business owner that you don't want to do. We know that, right? To, to, to have a good product and to have a good company and to have people come back to your business, there are parts of that business ownership that you have to do that you just have to surrender to because it's just the right way uh, to do things. Some of you are employees, right? You, you have to do things the right way. If you want to keep your job and if you want to keep the paycheck coming, you have to surrender to uh, whatever the the owner or your employer wants you uh, to do. For some of you, you're on a weight loss journey. Or maybe you're like me, you're just trying to maintain, like, why do the numbers keep going up? It's horrible. You're going to have to do some things that you don't want to do. Like, what color was that shake that I drank yesterday? I have no idea. And what was in it? I don't know. But you have to do some things that you're not going to want to do. You have to eat some things that you don't want to eat. That's just the process, right? And we know that. It makes so much sense in like the natural world. It's just the same thing in the spiritual world. The cool thing is that when you trust the person that you're surrendering to, it's actually not hard at all. When you trust the person that you're surrendering to, it's actually not hard at all. In fact, this sermon could actually be a sermon about trust. If I taught you about trust, surrender would just fall right in line. The Bible says this. This is one of kind of those hallmark scriptures of this theology of surrender. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths path straight. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. The, tr- the tree of the knowledge of good and evil says you have to understand it. It has to make sense to you. You have to have the whole plan. How many of you have ever said to God, I know I've said this, like, Lord, if you would just tell me the entire plan, the big picture, the 15-year plan, if you tell me the whole journey and give me all the points where you're going to come through and just give me the whole process, I will trust you. Because I'm that type of believer. I just have faith. Right? No, it never works out that way, right? All the planners in our room are like, yes, amen, that's the God I want to serve. No, it doesn't happen that way. See, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. doesn't mean God doesn't do things in logical ways. He often does things in logical ways. But I've been blessed in, in leading this church with our elders. I, I, we've been, there's been so many opportunities where, where we've been talking about decisions and, and, and we're just thinking things through. And, you know, like any CEO of any organization would be like, this is the right way to go. And oftentimes we make very logical decisions, but, but, but oftentimes, most times, I would probably say every time, even if there's like a no-brainer, there's this really beautiful pause in the room. All right, Lord, this makes perfect sense to us, but is this what you want? This isn't just a corporation. This is, this is a church, and we, we want to invite the Holy Spirit to come, and we want to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We don't want to just lean on our own processes, our own thoughts, right? We want to ask him, is this the direction that you want us to go? Because sometimes he calls us in directions that don't make sense logically in the moment. 
The scripture goes on to say this, that he will make your path straight. What's, so if I deny my, my, my own understanding, if I get out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and I say, Father, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to trust in the Lord, what will happen? He will make my path straight. He's the one who brings success. He's the one who will allow me to be guided in the right direction. It's a powerful scripture. Matthew chapter 6, 33 says this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. He's talking about provision, about the things that you need in this life. What does he say? Don't seek, seek after the things that you need, these material possessions, even some good things. Don't seek after those first. You can seek after them, but don't seek after them first. What should you seek after First, I want you to seek after his sovereign, authoritative leadership and rule. This is his kingdom. You can put the scripture back up. Seek first his kingdom. What is that? It's his, it's his authoritative uh, rule, his kingdom, right? His authority, his sovereign uh, nature. I want to seek that, that you are in charge, that you are my leader, that you are my ruler, and his righteousness. What that? His absolute binding and consequential moral truth, right? That, that the way I should live, that there is a guide for me, and I'm going to seek that first. And if I seek that first, He will uh, provide for me. The last one is uh, Psalm 19. It says, may, "May the words of the may these words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in Your sight, my Lord, my Rock, and my uh, Redeemer." I love this. What what a great picture of submission, Father. Let let the let the words that come out of my mouth, let them let them honor You. Let the things that I think. Let them be in line with your, your leadership. Let them be in line with your spirit. I, I, want, I want my mind and my mouth to, to, to be surrendered uh, to you. It's beautiful. Uh, speaking of uh, trusting in the, seeking first his kingdom and all these things will be added to you. There's a young man in our church, his name is Kyle Martin. Uh, Kyle came up in, in the youth ministry and he shared this testimony before, but I want to just share it again. I think we were coming off of uh, a fasting week, and, and it was probably the, the week after, and, and we were just seeking the Lord, and he was his kind of he was really pressing into to hearing from the Lord, and and he was in construction at the time, and he felt like the Lord said, "Hey Kyle, today I don't want you to pack a lunch," and he was like, "Okay." And here's the cool part: not packing a lunch when you're in construction might even seem irresponsible, right? You're doing heavy machinery, you're doing heavy work, you need energy, you need to be well fueled. But I love this. This is what I love about God, and so Kyle. Um, Kyle is actually now serving in Fellowship of Christian Athletes. It's a Christian sports ministry that's taking place in all of our schools. That it has been, uh, if you, over the last couple years, it has just exploded in our in our county. And they're discipling students in school. He's a part of that now. Uh, so just before he got into that, he was in construction, and, and he he felt like the Lord said, uh, "Don't pack a lunch today." So so he didn't. He said, "Okay, I'm just going to trust." You know, I, I don't I don't know what this means, but I'm not going to pack a lunch. And so he goes to his work site, and he's working, and it's lunchtime, and, and nothing's kind of going on. And so he says, you know, I'm just going to spend some time with the Lord. I felt like this was his time. This is his moment, right? So he's on his way to his truck, and the woman inside the house who they're working for comes out of the house, and she says, hey, by the way, I'd like to buy you lunch. What do you want? What do you want? And listen, this is the really cool part because Kyle's now raising his own support so he can do ministry in our community, right? And you can support him if you want to. Uh, but he's raising his own support. And God did that in a season just before he had to go into a season of faith. And there, there's just this marker in the ground right now for him and for his wife that says, I'm going to take care of all of your needs. Seek me first. Obey me first. Trust me. I'm going to make sure that you are taken care of. I'd like to talk about some of the major reasons this morning why we why we don't surrender to God's will, some of the hang-ups that we get stuck in. And this is, this is relatable to all of us, and so uh, stick with me this morning. We, we had a Christmas uh, experience. This was probably two or three years ago. I actually asked my kids for an example, and they came up with this. Instead of me telling stories about them that they don't know about, I asked them for the permission for this one, and they were like, Dad, please don't tell us stories about us. So I said, I will not ever stop telling stories about you. So... They gave me this example. They said, they said there was a Christmas when we gave each of them like two movies, right, like Blu-rays. They were really, we got these, uh, I mean, we got these really expensive movies for them. There was really cheap movies that we wrapped up. And well, that means, I'm saying we. What really happened is that Tracy bought the Christmas present and wrapped it, and then she put my name on it. So that's how it works at our house. And so I was just as surprised as they were. I was like, cool movies. All right, so anyways, moving on. Um, so they all got like two movies. 
And this is a couple weeks later, and we want to watch a movie, and one of my children pulls up a movie and is like, let's watch this. And we're like, yeah. And this other child of mine is like, you can't watch that movie. That's my movie. And I'm like, as the dad, I was like, technically, it's my movie. Rich, it might not say that, but I was like, that's what I was thinking. And, and I'm like, how are you going to hoard a movie? Like, what do you, like, you want to watch it alone? Like, what is that? This is obviously a shared uh, gift. And, and it, it, that's just a kind of funny example of one of the things that we do with the blessings of God is don't we like to control them? So often, one of the things, like the road to freedom really is uh, surrender. It calls us to let go of control of the blessings of God. It's so easy to control the blessings of God. Uh, this, is, this is my stuff. This is my money. These are my friends. This is, this, these are my things. These are my, this is my thoughts. This is my time. And God is saying, uh, uh, and, and just hear me on this because I think this is important for somebody in the room. It, are you going to love the blessing or are you going to love the one who gives the blessing? Are you going to love the blessing or are you going to love the one who who gives the blessing, right? And that's exactly what God is, is after with this. The road to freedom leads us to surrender our control of God's uh, blessings. This is a great story example of this is in Genesis chapter 22. And this is Abram, uh, later to be called Abraham. And he's prayed his whole life for a son. God promised him a son, and he's old. He's like really old. And finally a son comes. And now God attests Abraham, and he says, I want you to take your son up to the mountain, and I want you to sacrifice him for me. And in our ears, that just sounds like hideous. Like, why would God ever do that? And this, was, this is a masterful teaching moment for God, because you know the whole world is watching Abraham and his wife. Like, they were really old, and they just had a baby, okay? And now it's like, what is going on? So they're all, like, watching this family, like, what's going on? And the culture would have said, you need to sacrifice that child. Now, all of a sudden... Abraham's really old, and he's making his way up a mountain to sacrifice his child. So you know the whole world is watching. Who is this God this guy serves? Who is this guy? What's going to happen to his son? Everyone was interested in this story. Chapter 22 says this, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said, Abraham, here am I, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Morah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. And some of you know the story. Abraham takes his son Isaac up, and, and in, in a crazy twist of events, God actually provides another sacrifice. And he says, don't lay a hand on your son. He says, now I know that you love the one who gives the blessing more than the blessing. I know that your heart is really mine. That was a huge moment for Abraham, but I actually think it was an even bigger moment uh, for the people who were watching Abraham's life because they, they came away from that experience because now all of a sudden his son has come back down the mountain. Abraham has disobeyed whatever the normal gods would have required, and this God gave another sacrifice in his place. Who is this God that Abraham serves? He didn't sacrifice his son, and the blessing of God is still on him. The whole, everyone was watching Abraham's life, and there's this huge testimony to the surrounding region of this God that Abraham serves, who doesn't require children but gives a sacrifice in our places. It's a powerful, powerful story. Jesus is teaching some, uh, some people in, in, cha in Luke chapter 12, and he says that the ground of a certain rich man yielded abundant harvest. And he thought to himself, what shall I, listen to all the eyes, okay? What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops and the mice, right? Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there, will be store, there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is a, a, a lesson on greed, right? It's a lesson on, on I have these resources, I have this blessing, uh, but it's mine, it's not God. I choose for myself what I do with it. And there's nothing wrong with big barns, there's nothing wrong with having surplus, there's nothing wrong with setting yourself up financially so that you can take things a little bit easier as long as that's the plan of God for your life. It's very likely that God would want you to use your wealth or use your, uh, your skills or use your resources in ways that fuel the kingdom. That's just very, very likely. Uh, God wants to be able to speak into that blessing. Again, do you uh, love the blessing more than you love the one who, who gives the blessing? We have uh, some people in our church, and, um, 
actually there's a lot of you, <laughs> they have talents, they have skills, they have resources, and they have access to this particular products. And, and, um, and they've come to us and they've said, hey, I, you know, God has just kind of blessed me in, in this way. If, if, you, if you ever need anything, like, let us know if we can serve uh, some way. And, and I, it just stands out to me as, as just this powerful testimony of, is, that, is that this is God's stuff. And, and I, want, I don't want to love the stuff more than I love the one who gives uh, the stuff. The next point is that there are many opportunities to live outside of God's design for human relationships. There is extraordinary blessing and reward for surrendering to his uh, design. I'm not going to get into the whole story, but in Genesis, there's this relationship between uh, this boy named Joseph and, and his master's wife. It's Potiphar's uh, wife, and he's a servant in their house, and Potiphar has given uh, them him control over everything, and, and she uh, starts, his wife starts to pursue this servant boy, Joseph, and he says, he says, whoa, how could I sin against God and my master? How could I, how could I do something that is so uh, wicked? He, he has just surrendered in his mind that he is not going to engage in a relationship that is outside of the design uh, of God. And, and that's not just a sexual comment, because although that's the point of, of the story of, of Joseph, but it's also uh, in our employer-employee relationships, right? Are you lording authority over people? Are you, are you dominating them? Are you controlling them? Do you, is that how you treat your employees? Or if you are an employee, are you honest uh, with your employer? Are you, are you putting in a, a good day's work? Are you treating their resources uh, in a, an efficient way? Uh, the other one is parenting, right? When we parent our children, I'm, I haven't been a parent long enough to write a book on, on how to be a good parent, but I, we're getting there and, and I'm, I'm, we're trying to figure it out. And if I was going to write a book on how to be a good parent, I would probably compare parenting to the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. I, I think parents should be people who empower their children, right? You're the source of power. That's one of the things the Holy Spirit does for us. The second thing is you're the one, you're this person who walks alongside of them, right? Like there's this support that you give to your children. And the third thing that the Holy Spirit does is gives comfort, right? Like I'm here to comfort you and, and to make you feel at peace and make you feel uh, safe. Uh, some of you didn't learn to parent that way. Some of you learn to parent in very opposite ways than that. And we have to unlearn our parenting skills, right? That there is a design for our human relationships. And sometimes we have to surrender uh, what we want and what we desire. And we need to agree with the things of God in our lives. Speaking of agreeing, here's one for human relationships. How do you disagree? Not what do you disagree about, how do you disagree? Right? There's, like, there's actually protocol in Scripture for how to disagree with people, right? That we would do it in a, in a humble way and in a loving way and in a kind way. It doesn't mean you forfeit truth, not at all. It's, it's how you disagree. This has been helpful for me. When someone's name comes up and they're not in the room, pretend they're in the room. Only talk about people as if you, they were still in the room. How about friends? Using people, making friends with people of a certain status, Making friends with people of certain wealth, making friends with people because they have certain assets that are attractive, making friends with people because of the influence that they carry in certain arenas. That's not what friendship is. And we just need to surrender. Lord, I, I want, I want, would, would you help me to find friends? Would you help me to get into the right circles that, that I can love people and share life uh, with them? People are not things that we use to get what we want. People are not things that we use to get what we want. In fact, Jesus said this, if you want to be great, uh, be a servant. Right? It, it's just, okay, Lord, I'm surrendering to that instruction. I'm surrendering to that instruction. Number four, sanctification, discipleship, and healing are processes that we all must uh, surrender to. It's not a moment. How many of you have had, some of you have had this. You've had like a healing or you've had a, a heart change or a mind change or you were addicted to something and like you got prayer and boom, it was over. How many of you love those moments? It's just like, yes, Lord, I'm healed. It's over. How many of you know it doesn't normally happen that way? Uh, normally it's a process, right? And we fight this process. I I'd like you to join a 12-week small group. 12? Ah, how about two? Right? We don't like the whole process. I'm just going to pray on my own from my seat. Okay, great. That always works, right? No, come on. Right? It's, like, it's always a process. Almost always it's a process that we have to get into. How many of you would say there's things that you've learned already, we're a fourth of the way done of freedom, there are things that you've learned already that it's going to take you the rest of the year to sort out? Come on, somebody, right? 
Like I, you're like, I'm already working on stuff. And we know that. We know that it's not just going to be one small group meeting and you're going to be free. No, these are principles that we're trying to uh, uh, submit ourselves to and learn from. What would stop you from engaging in the process? Uh, pride's one of them. Pride usually stops us. I don't need that. I don't want that. I don't actually think it's always pride, though. Pride's an easy uh, thing to accuse people of. But I think oftentimes more it's shame and guilt. I just feel so bad about this. I don't want people to know. Um, fear, what will people think? What will happen? Um, I think it's probably fear the most that stops us from engaging in the process. Um, allowing a wound to be cleaned takes intentional agreement between the doctor and the patient. Or if you have children, it, between the child and the parent. If you are fighting the cleaning process, if you're not surrendered to the process, uh, there's no way that you can find cleansing in that area. I want to take just a short commercial if we can, and I want to uh, let you know about an opportunity that's come up. I know we got a lot of things going on. we got freedom going on. we got all kinds of stuff going on. But we had an opportunity. Dr. James uh, Reeves is, is really well known in the arena of, of sexual abuse. He spoke on the Conquer series. He has a curriculum uh, now for women who have been uh, in, in sexually abusive relationships. And he actually contacted us. He said that our name was coming up in different states that he was in, and he wanted to connect with us. And so uh, we are hosting, a, it's really an informational meeting, okay? This is for people who have been in abusive situations. These are people who are helping someone in an abusive situation. Uh, and it's really an informational meeting. We're not gonna dig things up in that meeting, but it, it's really a stepping stone uh, towards some, some greater healing. And I'd like to take just a moment, if you would, and we can watch the promo uh, on the screen this morning. Sexual abuse, a topic that is not nearly spoken of enough in the church. And perhaps it's because within Christendom, we don't realize exactly how prevalent this is. There's a lack of understanding of how deep those wounds go. I was searching to fill that emptiness and that void. It injures the soul. Women in the church don't talk about it. People don't feel safe to open up. Some of you watching this have never told anyone this is an arduous road, it's hard. Healing costs you something, and it is so absolutely worth it. We have to stop suffering in silence. If we don't talk about it in the church, people will remain broken. I'd like to be a church where we can be courageous enough to talk about difficult things, difficult processes for healing. I'd also like to be a church where we can be gracious enough to help people and walk with people through those processes. And, and, and if you will, I know that that, that video was very specific for a, a certain process of healing, but if you take the point uh, from maybe a, a higher perspective, it can be very, very difficult to surrender to a process of healing, but that's where real freedom comes from. And I want to encourage you. I don't, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what God is, is doing in your heart where he's saying, because what happens with me, even in my own personal experience, I just didn't want to talk about it. Am, am I the only one? Like, I just don't want to. People will say, well, why? And I'm like, oh, I just don't want to. That's the whole answer. That's all I have, right? And I, and I believe this lie that if I just keep pushing it back and keep pushing it back, it's not going to affect me. Uh, it, it's not really a thing that's there. Uh, it's gonna, I try to silence it in the past. And, and we know that that just doesn't work, that it, that it affects us. 
And man, I believe, I just create in me a clean heart. I believe that God is cleansing us out. I think freedom is a big part of that. I think that this particular uh, gathering is going to be a large part of that, that he really wants to bring us to a place where we can surrender to the process of healing and that he can, he can clean us out, that he can take away those wounds and that if we would agree with him, if we would surrender to him, he can clean us up. I was... Uh, I don't know how old I was, maybe like 18, and I was, I was in this lake, and there, was, there were clams in the lake, apparently, and I will definitely save you the details, but as I, I was on my way out, I was done swimming, I was about to leave, and I stepped on one of these clams, and it just sliced the side of my foot, okay, and I'll just, it was awesome, okay, it was, I'll just save the details. So I had to go to the hospital, and, and I, I get there, and the guy is talking to me, and he's like, hey, I have to numb your foot. And just so that you know, and he kind of smiled when he said it. He's like, this is really going to hurt, okay? And I'm like, why would you even say that? So he, he, get, he goes back and he gets the needle, and he looks at me, and, he, and, he, and I'm just trying not to be graphic for those who get queasy. But he, he applies, he administers the needle, and then, and then he looks up at me. And I'm trying to be tough because I'm like 18, and I'm a man, okay? And I'm like... <laughs> and he pushes it in, and he admits, and, and, and then it was like... I just, <laughs> and, then, and no joke, he stares at me and he goes, there it is. I'm like, what? What is that? You're an evil person, right? Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. If I was flailing my foot around, it would have been way more painful, right? There, listen, listen, and I, and I know this is hard. There, there has to be. That allowing a wound to be cleansed takes intentional agreement between the one Cleansing the injury and the one being cleansed. It's just something that we have to surrender to. My final point this morning is uh, that God's calling on your life for occupation and ministry requires us to surrender to his timing, his purpose, and his uh, preparation. I'd like to close with the story of Moses. Uh, Moses was uh, a Hebrew boy, and he is sent down the river because uh, the, uh, the Pharaoh is killing all of the Hebrew boys, and, and, uh, and the Pharaoh's daughter sees Moses in a basket, and she rescues him, and he's raised in the palace. And, and because he's raised in the, the Bible says he was raised in the palace for 40 years, right? So he, he should identify as, uh, as an Egyptian. Uh, he knows all of the culture. He knows all of the language. Uh, but what we find in the scripture is that uh, the Bible says that he goes out to see his people. And how they're being oppressed because the Egyptian had enslaved the Hebrews. And, and we find that he's starting to see himself as a Hebrew. I know I'm different uh, and I'm not an Egyptian. And, I'm, uh, and, he, and the Bible says he goes out to see his people. And he, and he sees an, an Egyptian slave driver and he's beating one of the Hebrews. And, and he actually breaks up the, the, the beating and he kills the Egyptian, right? So he's obviously choosing sides. He's a Hebrew and he wants to defend uh, the Hebrews, the very next day, he goes out and two Hebrews are fighting and they're fighting with each other. And they say something that's just so powerful to Moses. They, they, they say, who, who made you, who made you uh, ruler and judge over us? This is a powerful statement because I actually believe God was speaking to Moses and he says, I'm putting you in authority over these people. He's actually, God was the one who was making Moses the ruler and judge over them. But he just stepped into it in the poor timing. And so as he's kind of arbitrating between the two of them, they say, what are you going to do? Kill us like you killed the Egyptian yesterday. And Moses is like, oh man, now they know. So he runs, right? He runs and he goes into the desert for 40 years. And some of you know this story. He comes to God. It's actually kind of a funny story because he just keeps arguing with God. And, and he says, God says, I want you to go back and free your people. And, and, he, and there's just this incredible verse. This, this, this conversation is just so condensed into like this, this one moment. And he says, he says uh, God says to Moses, what's in your hand, Moses? And, and Moses says, uh, a staff. And God says, lay it down. This is a powerful conversation. What, what do you have? What, what, what is that that you have that you think is yours? It's my staff. Not much. I guess it's just a staff. Lay it down. Some of you know the story. God actually takes that staff and when he throws it down, it turns into a snake. And this was one of the signs that Moses was going to take with him back to Egypt to show that God was with him, this miraculous sign. 
right? But I think it was way more than just a staff. If you're a shepherd, having a staff, like that, that protects you. It protects the, the sheep. It keeps you stable. It's kind of an identifying mark that I'm a shepherd. I have a shepherd's staff. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing for the last 40 years. This is who I am. He probably slept with that staff and it protected him at night. How many of you know, I know for me, if God took my staff and turned it into a snake, I would never sleep with that staff again. Come on, somebody. Okay. If you up in a tree somewhere about 40 yards from our tent, all right? But he had to break the bond with this staff, this identifying mark of who he was. Because God said, I have a new assignment for you. And God does all kinds of weird stuff with us, right? Sometimes with our ministry and with our occupation, sometimes he, you know, like Abraham, you, you, you go through a process where you just surrender it. And what happens? You pick it back up and you keep moving. But God wants to know that you're surrendered to him. For some of us, you, you're in the business world and God is calling you into the ministry and you got to surrender that thing and you got you to dive into the calling that he has in your life. For others of you, you're in the ministry and God says, no, I need you in the business world. He does all kinds of stuff. But either way, not, one isn't better than the other. What's important is that we're, we're, we're saying, Father, I'm going to surrender to your timing. I'm going to surrender to your purpose and I'm going to surrender to your preparation for whatever calling you have on my life. And sometimes that's difficult because we think we know when the when is. It, Moses thought he knew. Joseph thought he knew. He, he was telling people, he was telling his parents they were going to bow down to him. He was a kid at the dinner table. Like, Joseph, just hold on to that one, buddy, okay? Just don't. We have to trust the timing, and we have to trust the purpose, and we have to trust the preparation. I've been really blessed here at Petra as we were doing youth ministry a couple years ago, and the worship team can come out. We're going to close with a song. Um, you talk to the, our students, and you say to them, uh, what do you want to do when, you're, when you graduate, particularly the seniors? And, and I was so blessed the number of them who would say, you know, I don't really know, but, but I'm just asking God that he would show me. Isn't that cool? Like, I don't, I don't actually know. But my future is not mine anyway. And isn't that the opposite of what the world says? I still don't know what the world is your oyster means. It means something, I guess, but the world's your oyster, right? That's what they tell our kids. And I'm like, I don't even like oysters, so I, I still don't get it. But you can do whatever you want. You are the captain of your own ship. And, and the believer says, no, no, I'm not. I'm not the captain. I'm a passenger. It's not my ship. I don't control the wind anyway. I'm trying to think if I can come up with any more. See, surrender, surrender is such a good thing. It actually, it actually leads us right into his hands. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing this song. I think this song will be a uh, little bit of a hallmark for the year. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold. Purify my heart, Father. I want to be holy, set apart for you. As we sing, let's just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I think he wants to speak to us this morning. Let's sing. Thank you. 
just bow your heads with me and just take a moment, just kind of, let's just take a moment together. If I could just give you um, a little bit of, of an approach for this moment. I, I feel like what so often, maybe it comes from our culture or uh, maybe it's just my background, but when I think of the word surrender, it's always in the context of what do I have to stop doing? What do I have to give up? What do I have to say no to? And that's, that's appropriate. I, I'd like to coach you a little bit, to pastor you a little bit here on, on the approach. I, I think if you were, would say, particularly in this moment, if you would say, Father, I wanna surrender my mouth to you. Would you, would you put in my mouth the words that you want to say? I, w- I wanna be saying the things that you want to say. I believe that if you, if you ask it for something to do, that, that your mouth will be so full of God's love and wisdom that you won't have any space to say other things. Yeah. Lord, I want to give you my mind, and I want my mind to be full of, of all the things that, that you teach me to think on, the things that are lovely and pure and, and that are a blessing. And Father, if you would just fill my mind, with, and if, I, if you would help me to think on those things, I don't think there'd be any space to think about other things. Father, what, what do you want me to do? Father, as I look at my schedule and my time, would you... Would you show me how to spend it? Tell me what you want me to do because I, I'm pretty convinced that if, I, if I'm doing the things that you want me to do and I'm, I'm living in a pace that you approve of, I, I, I think that I won't actually have time to do anything else. I, Father, in what way do you want to direct me? I'm gonna pray for us here in just a moment. I wanna encourage you, if, if the Lord's just speaking to your heart, really for whatever reason, our prayer ministers are here on the side. When we surrender, we... Well, let me say it this way. When, when we trust the one that we surrender to, it's really not hard at all. And when we surrender, we really are surrendering to his perfect plans. I did think of one more example for the boat is that I don't actually know that I would know where to direct the boat anyway. I could try to be the captain, but I... He's going to take you to better places. He's going to help you to enjoy better sunsets. He has, his plans are better for you than your plans are for you. I want to invite you, if you want prayer this morning, our prayer ministers are available. I'm just going to bless you and we'll dismiss. Father, thank you for your goodness. Father, thank you that when we surrender to you, we're surrendering to calling and we're surrendering to healing and we're surrendering into freedom and we're surrendering into the life that you promised your children. Father, I just pray that in the parts of of surrender that are difficult, in the parts of surrender that are hard, remind us that that when you trust the person you're surrendering to, it's not hard because you know the plans that you have for us. They're good plans. They're plans to give us life. They're plans for us to prosper, and they don't always make sense to us. And so we're going to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, and we're not going to lean on our own understanding, but we're going to follow you in everything and trust that you're going to make our path straight. I'm going to pick up my cross and I'm going to deny myself. Why? Because if I lose my life to you, I actually find it. And I'm not going to control the blessing, Father, but I'm going to let you bless me and allow me to be a blessing to other people through me. And so, Father, we wrap up this moment with one word, surrender. We surrender. Would you be with us as we go from this place? Would you continue to speak to our hearts? Would you help us to hear your voice clearly? We're so grateful for your great love for us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you go. We're excited to see you here next week. Be blessed. So glad that you're able to join us this morning. I hope that that service was meaningful to you. If you're in the area, I just want to give you a personal invite. We would love to see you here on campus if you have a chance to come and visit us. You can find out more about our community of people that come to worship here. We have an environment designed just for uh, people trying to figure out their way in a large church like ours. It's called Belong. And uh, Belong happens in a small group environment, usually just like five to ten people with some uh, nice snacks and that sort of thing. It's a chance for us to have a two-way conversation between you and, uh, and, and some people from the church. 
Also, if, uh, if you're online and you're looking for extra content, we have additional content on our website, some under our media tab. We have a blog space where we're continually rolling out extra resources, and uh, you'll want to check out our Facebook and Instagram as well. So, hope to see you in person, but until then, continue to make good on all of re the resources that we have online. God bless. Have a wonderful day.